Hey guys, today we're going to have a look at this LED light, just a standard Edison screw globe. It's about $30, $30, $40, 3,000 yen or so, um, sold in Japan. And it's got this PIR here, so it's an automatic sensor light, which you just screw straight in, sits facing down, and it turns on and off automatically as you walk past. Really handy, really helpful, uh, you know, around the front door or in your entranceways or hallways. Standard Edison screw. It is a Ritex brand and it is an SLED 40L and it's rated to 100 volts at 50 60 hertz. So let's have a look and see what's inside. So I've got the thing apart here. It was just a matter of breaking some glue seals on the heatsink and then the front cover came off. After that, it was just a matter of just disassembling piece by piece. We'll start from one end and work our way through. The main circuit board here is basically just a uh, standard switch mode power supply and then um, with a PIR tacked on. It was interesting how they made the contact to the, the Edison screw base here. If we look carefully in there, you can see there's a little dot just there. That's a slot where this spring wire uh, inserts and then it makes contact with the inside of this can, the Edison screw itself, and then the central wire just goes down to this stud on this end here. Just inserts like that, and that's how it sits inside the um, the plastic former, which then sits inside the uh, the heatsink. So it's pretty standard fare. We've got a, you know, our overload protection, and there's a current limiting resistor, and some capacitors. If I can get close enough, you might be able to see there. 105 degree rated, 400 volt. 400 volt. That leads me to believe that this may work at more than just 100 volts. On the end here, what have we got? Yeah, AC 100 volts. It doesn't say 230 or 240 volt. But, those capacitors are rated to 400 volt. And being a switch mode supply, the output's going to be kept constant no matter what the input voltage is. It'll automatically regulate. We might have to try this at 200 volts and see if we can make it go pop. Or maybe it'll just work. That's an interesting thing. Hmm. But beyond these capacitors, which I don't know what brand they are, the logo seems to indicate J or GJ or JG. Not sure. We've got a few inductors. We've got a, uh, a diode sitting here. We've got the transformer. And under this seal pad, we got a uh, IC. We'll have a look at the part number on that in a second. As we move down, we've got a reverse bias or a uh, flyback or some sort of diode sitting here. Maybe a reverse bias to uh, prevent backfeeding with the uh, transistor here, which is what is switching the um, LEDs on on the front because that is being controlled by this chip which I actually can't see the uh, numbers because there's a lacquer or some sort of conformal coating on it but that's the smarts that's being controlled by our PIR sensor you see also there's an LED now I've never seen this LED actually do anything I've got a few of these these lights in my place and my friends have got a few as well and I've never seen those flash I assume it's going to be a red LED that will flash like you see in your your home security system with the sensors that you use there um, at the data centers I work at they've got sensors for the lights which you know turn the lights on and off where in the, the section you're working at that time if you walk away then they'll turn off after a few minutes saving power and all that so I think this is probably going to be the same sort of thing and there's a just here there's a, uh, a pin header so I think maybe if we were to jump those pins it might activate this LED but I'm not sure if there's an option for it or if it's an undocumented feature this dome here doesn't come out very easily at all I don't know if it even comes out it seems to be glued in pretty hard so there's no way for a user to take that out and put the pin in but maybe there's another model that you can get with that activated and it's just cheaper just to you know keep the all the components the same and 
when this thing actually goes together, they can plug in and unplug rather than having two product lines on the factory. So we'll try that out as well. We'll try that, see if this LED does anything interesting. And at the same time, we'll um, try it at 230 volts. So that's pretty much it for the um, for this power supply. We've got our uh, optocoupler there for our feedback. There's a bridge rectifier down here. Not much going on. We'll have a look at this um, component here. This one. What do we got? Oh, upside down. LNK. We'll see if I can get that a bit closer. LNK six one six GG. I think. I have a close look at that with the magnifying glass, and we might um see what we can find on this thing. Alright, so it seems like we've got ourselves a Power Integrations LNK603-606 or 613-616. We've got the 616. It's a Link Switch 2 family. Um, an energy efficient, accurate CVCC, a constant voltage, constant current switcher for adapters and chargers. So basically it's just our controller for our um, switch mode power supply. So you can see the schematic here. We've got our, um, our chip here, there's our transformer, a few diodes, input, and our output. Pretty simple. Looks like it does all the smarts and all the uh, voltage control for our power supply. So we'll scroll down have a look at some things. Here we go. Here's our output power. So our 616GG is rated to 5.5 watts. Open frame is 6.1. We haven't got an open frame. That means... We've got good airflow. Like those power supplies you see where they've got the um, the metal case, it's all the holes perforated. Something where it's going to have easy airflow and um, easily cooled. So in our application, we'll say, well, about 5.5 watts. So that's probably a good indicator of how much power we've got. Our light doesn't actually give us a wattage rating, like a real-world wattage rating. It's the 40L, so I guess it's a 40-watt equivalent you know, to an incandescent light, but I'm not sure what the actual power rating is. Uh, we'll have to measure that when we're given it a test. So here's a functional description. The Link Switch 2 combines a high voltage power MOSFET switch with a power supply controller in one device. Use on-off control to regulate the output voltage. Da -da 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 -da. Consists of an oscillator, feedback, sense and logic circuit, 6 volt regulator, over temperature protection, frequency jittering, current limit circuit, leading edge blinking, all the buzzwords basically. We've got a, um, a few nice features, but yeah, pretty much a standard switch mode power supply controller. Alright, so let's move on to the next part. You probably noticed these parts here. Two little aluminium blocks. Actually an interesting design feature which they've included. You can see inside here we've got two rails in this plastic carrier and also two holes you're probably figuring out what these are for if I stick this back into its um, into its home just in there like that you see what lines up transformer and our um, controller chip these pieces actually sit inside there and poke through so when this is inserted into here we're actually heat sinking that chip and heat sinking our transformer with a chip here just for isolation we've got um, the sill pad which sits on top so this thing actually seems to be very well engineered technically you probably wouldn't need that sill pad really because that's a uh, epoxy uh, epoxy part but for isolation for creepage distance between the legs and this block that provides more insulation so there's no way that anything can arc over when this thing here is placed on there so that's a very nice design feature now we head on down to the uh, heatsink it's a pretty substantial heatsink bit of weight to it Nice and thick, you can see there. Good, uh, what, three millimeters thick there. 
It's nice fluted design, so when it's sitting facing down, because this is designed to face down with the, uh, the sensor, like that, you get nice airflow over the fins and our LEDs. These, uh, I had a look at the uh, layout of these and they're connected in series parallel. So we've got eight LEDs and they're connected four and four in series and then they're connected in parallel. Connection point here. It's actually got quite, I don't know if I can show this, but they've actually got quite thick traces running here between the LEDs and then they've got thin ones on the outside which are half thickness but then they're tied together underneath the LEDs kind of like a ladder so this this leg here or this side of the LED is connected through to this side and then from the other side down and down so it's in a line and then when it gets to the end it returns back so we've got one thick one about that wide and then we got a thinner one and a thinner one so the two thinner ones together equal the same thickness of the thick one give or take roughly it's a very thin board which i'm not going to take off because i don't want to damage it i we're going to have some fun with this you know pumping 230 volts through it um seems to be stuck but um the one thing that i went huh about with the design on this thing is you see the distance between here and here you got what's that four or five uh, four or five mil four mil they could have made this circuit board just a little bit wider and got thicker tracks because those two tracks on the outside they're not equal to the same width like if you add them together they're not equal to the same width of the central track going between the leds especially here and here where we've got these this groove you see the groove heading down there and then the groove heading down there that's like an indexing groove for this thing you can see the uh, these these uh, pegs which only really locate at the front part down the end it's not actually used so it seems like this is extruded or something so it's just a constant shape on the inside so because of those cutouts it gets very thin and I think one of them yeah this side here trace that's along here actually stops and then starts again so uh, it would have been nice to have that a little bit bigger so we could get the same thickness traces because this when it clips on goes nowhere near it it's only on the very edge so inside there is completely free but uh, whatever the thing still works it works actually pretty good the light is a is a, a reasonably high brightness I'm not sure what actual chips they're using um, I don't know if there's really any way to tell uh, and it doesn't have any advertising literature there's no literature saying oh it uses Cree or it uses um, Philips or whatever but it does give a nice you know warm white and then at the end we've got our cover which is just the standard sort of opaque plastic with the uh, standard PIR kind of lens on the end this one here it just mates up with the end of this and uh, clips on I'm not going to clip it on now because I won't get it apart easily that's this is what holds this in it's kind of sandwiches in and um, holds the whole thing together so that's pretty much it so uh, let's stick this thing together and See what happens when we pump some real voltage through it, eh? Alright guys, so I've got this uh, light set up with the uh, Variac here. Um, I'll do another video later. I'm going to restore this thing, but it's working for the moment, so we'll use that. Uh, the Fluke multimeter, connect up just to show us what voltage we're actually running. And then our light. I've put some black tape on the LEDs, just so that when it turns on it doesn't blow out the camera and you can't, you know, make you not be able to see anything. So, we're going to give it a go and see how low voltage this thing runs and then we're going to pump it right up to 240 volts I've got a 100 volt supply so this Variac allows me to go from 0 to 240 on a 100 volt input so like I said before it had 400 volt input caps so it's rated on the nameplate to 100 which is about here somewhere 
But we're going to see how far it goes and see if we can make some fireworks or see if it still works. So let's have a look and see what happens. I've also um, jumpered that, uh, the jumper here. I've put some solder blob on there. So we're going to see if that LED works or what that jumper is actually for. All right, so let's, I'll turn it straight up to 100 to start with. There's 105 there. All right, that sends my hand. So you can see it's come on. You can see it shining through the tape. That's all looks pretty good. So let's go down first. Well, actually, that light's not coming on, is it? So I wonder what that uh, jumper's for then. I assume the jumper was going to enable the uh, LED, just like on a, a, a PIR in a security system. But yeah, maybe it's a testing thing, or who knows? Oh, there you go. So it's not going to detect my hand now. Oh, there we go. Yep. So it's working fine at 100 volts. So let's go down and see when this thing's going to turn off. We've just hit 80 volts, 70 volts, 60 volts. Oh, it's just starting to buzz. It's at 55 volts, 53 volts. Yeah, I can hear it buzzing. It's not too happy. Down at 40 volts, still going. 30 volts, still going. Jeez. Looks like it's starting to go a bit dimmer there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's not happy at 16 volts. Right at 16 volts, it's where it dies. And you can see there if I... Oh, hang on. No, it's not going to turn back on now. If I crank that back up. Yeah, looks like it's a bit... A bit grumpy down below 60 volts. So our lower voltage, I would say, is 60. All right, back to 100 volts. Now let's see what happens if we go up. What I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to stop the camera. I'm going to set the camera to 60 frames a second. I'll take those uh, that tape off, and uh, we'll um, try and get some good footage if it goes pop. All right, so we're at 50 frames a second, and um, it looks a bit dark just because I've played with the exposure, just because these are so bright it was blowing out the image. All right, so I'll read off the voltage as I go up. Let's see what happens. We're at 105, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, still looks fine. 160, 170, 180, 190, 200, 215, 220, we'll get 220 volts, 230, 240, I've maxed out at 240 volts, and that's still going. Well, that was a bit boring, wasn't it? But hey, just goes to show that switch mode power supply is working fine. Input caps rated right at 400 volts, I would say go all the way up to that level and probably probably be fine all right well looks like there's no change in brightness all the way up and down loves it well well there you go that's what's inside a high quality Japanese LED light with a sensor I might uh, put the case back on and stick it back in the ceiling and see how long it lasts now that I've played with it all right we'll see you next time